Thanks for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. I hope you're having a good day. Me, it's my weekend and it's raining and it's going to be raining all day, but that isn't stopping me from filming outside. So please don't mind the sound of the raindrops hitting the tarp. It's coming down pretty hard right now, although you probably can't see that in the background. But the purpose of this video is not for me to ramble on and rant about the weather. Actually, it's a positive rant because I do enjoy the weather. It's actually to talk to you about this little guy here, the tour box. I was sent this uh, in the mail a couple of weeks ago and I was immediately intrigued by it. Now the company did reach out to me and ask if I was interested in reviewing this. And I said a definite yes. Now I do all my editing on Final Cut Pro, but this will also work on DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, it works on Windows and it works on Mac. So I was keenly interested in trying to, trying to hook it up not trying to hook it up, hooking it up to my computer and seeing if it actually did make an improvement. Now my current workflow involves using a trackpad. I don't use a mouse. To me a mouse is something that was a great innovation back in the 1980s. It really helped change how we used our computers. But then along came a trackpad and a lot of us are still using mice and they work for general office work but if you're doing any sort of video or graphics work I highly recommend a trackpad. It gives you so much more use. It's more modern. It allows for gestures and more control over the cursor. And I really like the trackpad. But this thing here takes that a little bit of a step further because as you can see here, it's got a ton of buttons on it. It's got one wheel, it's got a dial, and I really like what I'm able to do with this. So with the dial, I'm able to uh, move the playhead a lot more freely. I can move it at 10 frames a second. That's how I've got the dial set up. And the wheel allows me to adjust at a single frame a second. And I find this allows me to get my playhead exactly where I want it. Now, using the keyboard and the trackpad are pretty good. I can use the trackpad to bring the mouse or the playhead more or less to where I want to. And then I use a combination of K, I think it's, I'm trying to remember the keyboard here, but it's the keys either side of K. And I can step ahead one frame at a, sec uh, at a time or I can just play forwards or backwards. And if I tap it, it plays at double speed. And I find that quite useful, but I'm always just moving the playhead a little bit too much or too less. And this allows me to fine tune that. But there's other things I'm able to do with this as well. Uh, two buttons up at the top here, undo and redo. How often do you make an edit or a change and go like, yeah, that didn't work out the way I wanted to. T a simple tap and you can undo or redo a change, and I really, really like that. As you can see, there's a ton of buttons here, and it gives me so much control. I kind of thought when I first got this, how am I doing my video editing? What am I doing the most? And my YouTube videos, the workflow is very different from my family videos or my event videos, where I've got hundreds and hundreds of clips, and I'm constantly making changes, copying attributes. So what I did is, you can press down on the wheel and I assign that to copy. And the press down on the dial, I assign that to paste attributes. And so that really helped as well. But I'm also doing a lot of color balancing and grading. So the D-pad here, well, I call it a D-pad. That's a holdover from when I was playing with my Sony PlayStation. The right arrow will bring up the color workspace. And the left arrow takes me back to my default workspace and that gives me even further flexibility. And I find that using the tour box in combination with the trackpad makes it a very, very useful tool. It's really helped my workflow. And the nice thing about this thing too is I've tried it on multiple surfaces and it's heavy enough. It is a really solid unit. And no matter what surface I put it on, it won't move as I'm editing, and I really like that about it. It, it. It's very stable, it's very solid, and it works really well. Right out of the box, it comes supporting Adobe family of products, so Lightroom, uh, Premiere, etc., Photoshop. Final Cut, they do support it, but you don't get... Oh, that light is about is getting a lot of water on it. That's not good, so let's put that there. <laughs> The joys of shooting outside in weather. Yeah, there's a whole stream of it coming down right here. Uh, that's lovely. Well, if the light goes out, we know why. I've got some spares in the basement, but getting back, what was I talking about? Yes, talking about editing on Final Cut. 
So it does support Final Cut, but it just doesn't come pre-installed with all the presets. However, it's pretty simple to set up. So let me talk to you about the setup. As soon as I got it, I went to the website, I downloaded the software, it immediately installed and downloaded the latest firmware, and I think that took all well, less than a minute. And then right in the same section where you go to download the software, you can download the presets. And it's like no more than two clicks away from what you need to do, and I really like that about their site. It's very well organized. The manual that comes with it is thick, and it's laminated. Well, it's not laminated. It's got that glossy paper. It's big, so even if you've got eyes like mine, you can read it. Once it takes you to that preset page, I went ahead and selected Final Cut. I could have picked DaVinci Resolve or some other application, and there was about 15 presets. So I downloaded about five of them, trying to find one that closely approximated my workflow, about got me about 90% there, because everything you can do here, you can edit. You can edit the buttons and how they are set up. And I found one and it was perfect. And so what I started doing, as I mentioned, I changed the color spaces on the left and right button, because previously they had it set to different um, playhead modes, such as edit, such as delete. Oh, sorry, not delete, um, um, blade and a few other different cursor modes. And I thought, well, I don't really use those as much and it's pretty easy to just hit the B button. But buttons where I have to, or functions where I have to hit three or four different buttons to get what I need, well, assigning those to a button really takes, really saves me a lot of time because now I'm not having to go back to the keyboard. I can have one hand on the trackpad and one hand on this thing. And I'm still configuring it. I'm still changing some of the buttons. Uh, I really do like the setup. It's actually got, I mentioned there's a dial and a wheel. It's actually got two wheels, but one is right up in the top left here. And if I tap down on that, the entire timeline is brought into view. And then by going upwards or downwards, I can zoom in or zoom out. And that's another function that this thing does really well at. When I'm using Final Cut and I'm using the trackpad, it's kind of like, if you could imagine operating the trackpad after you've had half a bottle of 40 ounce alcohol, that's kind of how the trackpad functions when you're trying to adjust your zooming in. It's just not as responsive. So this really helps in that regard. And the top button is your play button. You tap it once to play, you tap it again to stop playing. It is saving me an awful lot of time. Is the TourBox, is this device gonna save you a ton of time? Is it gonna greatly improve your workflow? Well, it really depends. If you're producing occasional videos and they're not very long, then sure, it'll improve your workflow, but is it going to justify the cost? Is the efficiency going to be there? Is the return on investment going to be there? I mean, it'll certainly look good on your desktop. But if you're like me, if you're producing videos an awful lot, if you're producing longer videos, medium-sized videos, then yes, it definitely does improve your workflow. It does gain extra efficiencies and make your work a little more enjoyable at the same time. I really do love all the dials and the buttons. Um, it's just an incredible tool that's helped me improve my workflow. But I want to share with you my experience. When I first got it out of the box, yes, it was easy to set up, easy to use, download the presets. But it's not like right away I go like, wow, this is saving me a lot of time. The first time I used it, I realized, okay, I need to map these buttons. So I started playing around with it. Then I thought, oh, it'd be really good to add the color spaces to here and start expanding the color grading. So I made notes because while you're editing, you don't want to be fiddling around with configuring something else. So I made a lot of notes. And then after I was finished editing that project, I went back and I started configuring the tour box again. And this process went on and on. And I'm at the point where it's pretty efficient to my workflow, but I've still got to, I've still got a lot of work to do to really dial it in so it's, the most efficient tool for me. And the one area that I'm still working on is color grading. I do an awful lot of color grading and configuring some of the dials and buttons to help me improve that process, to give me that extra, uh, that extra, what am I looking for the word? Um, to be able to finesse things a little bit more, to like I'm able to adjust the playhead one frame at a time as I'm adjusting the different, um, aspects of color grading, I want to be able to just move things up just a little bit or down a little bit, left a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Just gives me that extra finesse, that extra bit of control. So yes, I do highly recommend the Tour Box, but don't expect that as soon as you get it right away, you're going to be like, wow, this works really, really great. It's going to take time to, to truly configure it to get it working the way you want. It's like 
I guess uh, a good analogy would be is switching to a different uh, photo editing piece of software or video editing piece of software. Like the first time I went to Final Cut, it took me a while to figure it out. It took me a while to do the basic things. I wasn't efficient like I am today. And that's the same thing with the tour box. Immediately you're going to notice, wow, it does this better. But it's going to take time for you to set up the buttons the way you like it. I do recommend downloading the presets that are on Tourbox's site, but tweak them, finesse them a little bit. At first you might think, wow, I really love how this button deletes. It, it saves me a lot of time. And then later on you might go, yeah, but you know what? I really need this function front and center most of the time. So that's the one caveat I would tell you with. It is a really great device. It does save you a ton of time, but it's going to take you time to set up. It's not something you're going to, you know, after five or 10 minutes, it's going to be working at 100% efficiency for you. And one last thing, talking about setup, there's a button here right beside the dial. And what I love about this is as you're working with it, if you do want to quickly change something, you press that button and up comes the configuration menu where you go ahead and adjust things. And it's actually very simple to do. So for example, if I want to change the dial button or the wheel, I just navigate to where that is. And immediately you'll see the, the top function. So if you just press the button itself, but if you click on that double arrow you see there, then you see you have so many more options. So when you press down in combination with pressing another button, you have many more capabilities. So it's something you kind of want to think out before you go ahead and assign functions to it because there's one, two, three, four, there's like 12 different buttons and dials on the surface here. But when you realize the different combinations, that can be over 70 different combinations. So think those out. The things you're going to use the most often, you're going to have on top and then you would use the combination buttons for all those other elements. So to summarize, the TourBox is a great addition to my video editing suite. It improves my workflow and my efficiencies. And for you, I think it'll do the same. So why not give the TourBox a try? I have links to purchase the TourBox in the description down below. Use my links and get it for $169. That's $21 off the regular price. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.